you know, we had a lot of fun at TI. We made a lot of memories, but one of my most memorable moments was like the morning of day four when we were like running low on grocery supplies and we didn't have any more coffee. And there was just like maybe a cup and a half of old coffee from the day before left over. And I woke up <laughs> and I'm like, well, this is what we got. And you and I split it. And you're like five minutes later, you know, that old coffee's not half bad. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I check old coffee now, I just think, you know, it really isn't half bad. It's better than not having coffee. That's for it's sure. True. That's very true. That's an easy equation right there. So, all right, Trent, here we go. Fantastic Five, Navi. Navi completely out of it. Fantastic Five with uh, a sliver of hope. One only wonders what this means for the mighty Nautis Vincere. Will we see Pudge? Will we see some fan favorites? Will we see Techies? Or will it be... Standard Shadow Demon Luna Outworld Devourer. We'll see. Time will tell. You never know. But OD first pick. They're off to the races in a very standard manner. Yeah, we talked about this earlier today, too, if you guys weren't here for the very first series um, when we had Navi playing. Was that Liquid? I believe? Yeah, they were up against Liquid. Um, they end up going for the Beastmaster in the very next pick here. We'll see if they do the same strat again. Mm -hmm. um, but what we were noting was that Navi had typically been banning OD in the first phase even when they had first pick or second pick, either way for a lot of their games. And then starting today, they've kind of mixed it up a bit. Looks like they're into taking the OD, maybe trying to give Dendi a, a really good chance to dominate in that mid lane in terms of the, like, the last hits, something he's kind of famous for, in terms of like, last hits, denies, and really dumping on his opponent's early experience in gold. So OD helps with that. And then um, we're seeing the Bounty Hunter counter up against Drow lineups and OD lineups. And I think... Uh, if teams want to try and play a split push game, this is probably the support to look for, right? In position four, mm -hmm. he scouts out the enemy, tells you where they are. We've seen some great plays from Bulbo today on Liquid. Did a fantastic job on the Bounty Hunter doing exactly that. Gave them so many dude. options for split push with their Luna. God, that game was so sick, dude. Like, like he, That was like such a perfect yeah. example of what Bounty Hunter is good at. That might be one what of the best examples of Bounty Hunter creating space without like actually killing people. You know, you, yeah, like are, his stats look like shit. Yeah, like, there's <laughs> a ton of ex examples of games where like you snowball or Bounty Hunter gets some kills mid and he kind of takes over and that's not what that game was. That was an underleveled Bounty Hunter just basically running around, kind of showing himself taunting, leeching XP and forcing the enemy team to spend so much time thinking about where is he, where so could he be. So much gold on sentries. Yeah, man, I mean they bought they were in the double digits of centuries within like the first five minutes of that game you know that that's it was really impressive that's one of those games that you kind of want to just like make a highlight video of where you kind of fast forward through and break it down with purge because it's just like the sick shit that nobody even notices or cares about in the average game that is honestly like super impressive yeah very AKA much winning <laughs> bulba <laughs> Exactly. <clears throat> that was what we just did for 60 seconds. So Yeah, you're welcome, dude. I don't know. I've, he gets too much hate, so. Oh, no. Bulba. Bulba invented everyone, including you guys, so. <laughs> don't don't hate. Um, Beastmaster's still left in the pool. Uh, the Marana's there. That could be for, like, a Seneco kind of thing. Um, could just be a safe lane Marana, perhaps, for Dijera. Yep. Not Swords, quite as uh, yeah. YOLO here, but the Marana is also nice just for like, you know, again, your draft lanes that are decent against Bounty Hunter coming in. Everyone's going to be ready for that little bit of aggression for the most part with their cores when you know it's coming so now early. Turn to ban. <laughs> Man, I just got a sick tweet. Every game I want to spectate is casted by Zayori. What kind of curse is this? I don't know, man. That sounds pretty terrible. I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I like how they tag you in it. Like, <laughs> nope. Somebody else. Well, somebody that follows him tagged me. I'm like, oh great, thanks. I oh, needed to classic. see that. That's okay. even better. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Join Dota published an article about elimination mode. Maybe we're friends after all. I'll retweet it. That's a pity retweet. Damn, dude. Savage. I mean, come on. It's Join Dota. Toby doesn't even work there anymore. Come on. <laughs> Hey, man, we're BFFs. It's fine. Who owns All right. Thing? Where are we? Still banning uh, heroes. Slowly banning. Master. Shadow Demons made it through, though, dude. Oh, nice call. So do you want to do the SD Luna? Oh, maybe they want to do hey, the SD Junker. You're Yuggy. I mean, there's no real concern about... Well, maybe there is. I was going to say there's no concern about Shadow Demon on Navi's side because you have the Sand King. And that just kind of gets spicy. But when you already have the Marana, maybe that's enough to warrant the Shadow Demon. 
Mm -hmm. um, your Dazzle's still in the pool. Someone who's getting banded a lot against these OD strats about whether the Beastmaster, maybe they're less worried about the group up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still always a, a nice pairing, you know, the the aura with any kind of sustaining support, particularly Dazzle. All right. But you ready? What is it? Faceless Void Enchantress. For Navi, Faceless Void Enchantress. All right, yes. we'll see. And it. it's a Ditchera Marana. We'll see if you're and a the god. The fifth hero will be a Seneco Winter Wyvern. Winter yes. Wyvern? Those are our three heroes in no particular order. Probably Seneco's heroes here, and then maybe he'll go Oracle instead, actually. All right, I changed my mind. It's Oracle and then into Enchantress and Faceless Void. Oh, it's Rubik. Okay, it's Rubik, Enchantress, Faceless Void. We did it. All right, well, if we that's keep it. guessing heroes, we might eventually get them, so just keep no, it going. No, that's it. Man. I'm locked in. I'm <laughs> locked in. Final answer. All right. You like the Rubik? You're going with the Rubik? Well, we had it this morning, and I thought that he played it really well, and it's up against Sanking, who I think Rubik is like, mm -hmm. like the favorite person he wants to be against in this meta. Okay. No, I, I think I totally agree with the Rubik. I don't think any of those calls are particularly outlandish, but it's the Chen. Yeah. <laughs> we've been we've been begging for this though. We've talked a lot about Chen. You and I have cast at least like five Navi games over the last day and day and a half. We've been talking about the Chen. We're finally gonna see it. Are they going to Changes with, everything with something. I mean, well, I was talking about Luna is often a hero that pairs nicely with Chen because they, they like to hit some similar timings of knocking down towers and stuff, but no Luna. So is this just like a just casual Chen, you know, just throwing him into the lineup? Do you think Navi has something that they want to pair with him here? I think it's just art style hero pushes early, group up with the OD, um, combination of the send home is really nice, right? Because you can, like, mm -hmm. send home the OD and then he astrals, or send home someone and then OD astrals them. This is just like a, a Chen Coddle kind of game, just recall, send home, recall, send home. <laughs> well, it's just kind of nice. It's, it's like, a little cheeky combo. like tag team Kunkka, you know, just X marks the spot each other back and forth. Yeah. Chen kills the Void, though. It's not going to mm -hmm. be a Void anymore, I don't think. Obviously, I you it. wanted the, the Lances in inside. I, I would say it's more likely to see, like, a general um, puck at this point Reserve than time. a Void. Um, we had it earlier. Obviously, did not work out well for them. Lost to FNM. Slardar still in the pool. General's been feeding with it all, all tournament. There's my uh, the Snake of Oracle. Oracle. Yeah, good call. Well, Classic a lot of sustain combo here. with the OD. Very safe. You know, you're always a little fearful of OD or uh, pardon me, uh, uh, AA. You know, when you've got Chen, Oracle, a lot of healing on your team, but uh, both support secured for Fantastic Five. Feels like a pretty safe bet here. Oscar ban. Obligatory. Even if you don't think they really want to pick it, you still sort of have to cover your ass, especially I in mean, the best that's of one. Worth, that's worth it, giving Morana to General and just being like, good luck in the offlane, buddy. Go arrow some hard camps. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine because we have a Huskar. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good luck. Or arrow some hard camps, bro. You're good. Pat him on the fine. back. Put me in, coach. Yeah. The, uh, the Oracle's interesting, so not going to go with the Rubik, even though now there's a Witch Doctor, which is kind of nice. I mean, we saw that game where I think it, it was Seneco, actually, who didn't take the healing war, uh, the healing point in Voodoo Restoration, so he couldn't toggle it, so he ended up getting Death Word stolen. Oh, that sucked. yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was sad life. Yeah, that um, was. That was <laughs> mistakes were made. But uh, no, they're not going to opt for that. Um, Rubik, maybe just, uh, I mean, OD Oracle, again, big combination, the best. So, the understandable. Best. Now they have double heals with the OD. The bomb. Yep. Oh. Do you know Drow still in the pool? Yep, she is. What the hell? Navi play the Spirit Breaker now. So it's a... General SB. A core breaker. Okay, I... Well, we can talk so, about it. We get into the game a little bit. Yeah, I want to. I want to spend some time on position three spirit breaker. I think it's very hard to execute with. I think position four spirit breaker or five Ten is seconds. way. It's a way different ball game where there's less way less risk. pressure. Yeah, off lane like leaving the lane. Like how to put this? Spirit breaker wants to spend time running around, and all that time you're running around, you're not in lane. And if you don't get those kills, your opportunity cost is so much higher. You know, most offlaners now can go Iron Talon, go Jungle, farm reasonably fast. Even LC can farm pretty fast. Spirit Breaker, he doesn't farm for shit. Even if he gets a, a Iron Talon, which he's not going to, it, ugh, <laughs> it's brutal. You know, you can just end up getting boxed out, and then all of a sudden you're level 5 Spirit Breaker at 10 minutes trying to wonder what the hell's going on and why you're playing this stupid hero. You know, it's, it's tough. You really I have to it. find a lot of kills. All right, you, you've convinced me. Yeah. Do you know what's gonna be funny when this Chen gets burrow striked, uh, and then like all the sand king stuff? Like if he can kill those creeps with like the caustic man, mm -hmm. 
the damage. And then again, they're pretty beefy. But what's the last hero here? Um, mm. And the other thing probably is, probably Jug would not mid, no, right? I digress. Razor. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Razor could work. They've got some a fair bit of stun. I think it might be Invoker. Five seconds. Just, yeah, just throw him at mid. That's pretty solid. Good sun strike. It's the Razor. Okay, you were right. You got that one. Good call. Thank you. Thank you. Could have gone like either way though. The SB. I think they both would have been good. Yeah, I hear you. But now they've got some some good right click damage. I mean, I like the Fantastic Five lineup a lot more. I think it's more conventional. They've got better scaling towards late game. You've got you know fairly reliable stuns in Sand King and Witch Doctor. Not the most reliable, but you know, you're going to be stunning people. Illidan's going to be running up on fools. You'll get Na'Vi, and I think for them to win this game, a lot of things have to go right. You know, you need Ditura to get a fair bit of farm. Still, we've seen problems with Safe Lane Mirana actually coming online, so that's a potential issue. You've got Dendi on Outworld Devour, another hero that needs a fair bit of farm, so if he gets shut down, it's not so great. You've got Fatty Cheeseburgers in the off lane. We already talked about how hard that's going to be, and given that they have Chen, who's dedicated to the jungle, they don't have this kind of lineup where you've got a flexible, like, you know, ogre running around that can just sort of help any lane that's struggling. I could see a reality where Na'Vi struggle in, like, two of the three lanes, and then it's just Chen jungling, and Bounty Hunter's leeching his XP. Like, this is... Am I am I off kilter here, Trent? Rain me back in, dog. I'm going way out. Nah, that, I think... Uh... I think Navi have a very difficult lineup to execute. They got just got a snowball. I mean, mm -hmm. offlane spirit breaker. Like mid has to go well for Dendi. Probably will. Ditcherok can rotate in possibly like six minutes or something, and like throw an arrow into an astral, and then they just group up as five from there on out. Is that it? I mean, it'd be like ten minutes, I suppose. But I don't know. You can like astral into a general gank, kill mid, but it's a razor again to to pick someone who's really tanky. I think the radiant got it. Yeah. Team of the first barracks killed the Radiant. Right, that's by 10 minutes. I did 6 to 10. I thought that sounded pretty reasonable. But, you know. I mean, who's to say what's reasonable, mm -hmm. right? It's true. You never know. No it's one's killing Roche this game. I think they'll kill it twice. Fantastic Five take high ground. I did 30 to 37, though. I think it'll be a, kind of a yeah, quick game, yeah. but I don't think it'll actually end before 30, even if it's semi-definitively over. All hey. right. Yeah. What, what number are we on today? Six? No, this is at least seven, seven or eight. Man, fast games, though. I guess we are seven and... Are we really seven and a half hours in? No, that can't be right. Well, we're we six had, and a half hours in. Our first two games were like 20-minute matches. Yeah, that's true. I think we're about an hour ahead schedule. I saw people in chat saying, isn't this game supposed to start later? Like it, I don't know, man. It just starts when it starts. I'm a, yeah, we're, we're just along for the ride, guys. I'm glad I can barely keep up with how fast they start, you know? Yeah, it's excellent. So let Shout me out see. to the... Uh, the admins we Doing have a fantastic job we have four more games after this uh, probably the highlight being team secret versus alliance well actually i guess that's not really a highlight alliance is eliminated okay well we get to see secret roll over alliance in the next <laughs> game and uh and then we'll have the fantastic five versus escape but yeah we're getting down to the point where a lot of our matches are already this wrap around, decided dude. they got lolic that was like a, a big burrow play. sick smoke wrap around he goes sandstorm They've got a sentry and oh, a dust. dust and sentry. All right, how much of gold do they get? 286. So 90 plus 100, they gained 100 gold. That's pretty value. <laughs> I mean, Lulloch had to skill Sandstorm, though, and as we've seen, That's the biggest a lot of SKs are skipping that even until, like, 8 or 9. Yeah, that so. was a weird play. I'm not sure why he went for that. This is like, oh, God. This is like when I play Darks here and when I play Crystal Maiden, I just, the second I leave, like, the second I spawn in, I skill my W. I take my Frostbite, and I take my Iron Shell. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Earthshaker, because one time I was typing, and I accidentally scaled E as Earthshaker. Ooh. And then I played Batrider the other day, and I had this genius laning setup where I convinced my team to go aggro trial because we were going to win the game, because I was like, look, I can 1v1, they're off laner, this game's over. And I was typing that to them, and I skilled E as Batrider. Wow. Or no, I skilled Flame Break, that's what it was. Level 1 Flame Break. It's fucking awful. Great. <laughs> then I lost my lane, and we oh, lost because no. of me.
I actually Great. have not had many pub miss skills like that, but I the only one I've had that's really embarrassing was Star Ladder. I played a pub with Era, and I was using Hanskin's computer, and he has really, really weird hotkeys that make no sense to me. Lolik up top. Is he going to die again? They've dusted him. Arrow, he sidesteps Yukes. it. I think he's good. Okay, close call. But, uh, you know, they had a break, and we played Dazzle Huskar together. He was Huskar, oh, I no. was Dazzle. And uh, I skilled stats at level one. And uh, <laughs> I was just like, so, Era, this little thing. Uh, <laughs> I might have skilled stats level one. It wasn't that crippling to the game, but it was I don't very know how embarrassing. I do it, General's I'm like typing, dead, I think. And I'm trying to hit levels, and I just hit enter again, and then suddenly I hit E, and I'm just skilled into. <laughs> then I just have, you know, Aftershock as Earthshaker, and I just lost. Yeah. Like, that was it. Yeah, that's a, a big time bummer. Arrow was very nice about it though. We laughed it off and high fived. So nice guy. You know, I watched a, a fair bit of Ti Six. Well, not a fair bit, but uh, a, a good a good chunk of Escape Games with uh, Era's dad and brother, which was oh, kind yeah. of fun. It's kind of neat to watch like esports with people that aren't really into the specific game, but they're really into the people that play the game. So they're like super into it, but they kind of don't know what's going on. It's it's a fun little spectator experience. It was, I mean, that's also pretty unique too. You know, it's not very often I get to like watch games with players' parents. <laughs> it was cool with um, at TI with Weehaw's brother. Yeah, up in like the DC booth the entire time. Yeah, yeah, he was real cool. And he was very much into the games. Yep. Oh, down bottom. What do we got going on here? Art style, what are you doing? What is he doing? No. So uh, I wasn't even watching that. So what did you say bottom. about Navi trying really hard? He died right here. Wait, what? Your ashes. Do you see the tier three tower in the bottom lane? Yeah. That's where Chen died. <laughs> I guess he's trying to deny himself to the tower instead of the bounty. Yeah. I was watching the the spirit breaker down bottom. I wasn't watching anything. I'm befuddled. Come on, befuddled indeed. I wish I saw the setup. It was really strange though. Like, why did he go so deep down there? I assume he's just getting chased by a bounty or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of weird. But now he, he like, has as uh, level one bird. Chen, you know. <laughs> well, that's he's got plays now though. Yeah. Radiant pulling the camp. Okay. Oh, but he's not sending the bird that way. Going the small camp instead. Okay, this is kind of cool. I like this. Fat cash. Mm-hmm. Mr. Art style. It's also just super annoying, and there's not really much you can do against it besides just try to come in and snipe the last hits. Kills the camp. Gets rid of the creep. Easy peasy. Courier, RMN, top here. Get the one. Oh. Oh, one, two, oh, one, oh, two. Oh, oh, that was fast. Oh, yo, that was close. Man, whoever hit that button. Some, I'm going to get some Sineko because he pinged right after. Some ninja reflexes. Yeah. Okay, we've got a slow start here. Let's take a look at the gold graph. A couple hundred gold lead for F5. Lolic. Uh, Dendi rotated top, yeah. Slapped by nice an arrow. Rune. Should be a kill. Dendy's on his way in. Yep, there it is. <laughs> One little auto attack. All right, see you guys. I'm going back mid. GG. This is one thing I remember Navi doing quite a while ago, too, where they were doing a lot of the safe lane potum for Dichira. Kind of like era and escape. Really? It was a little more popular. Like, right as the Ags came out, it was much more... Um, yeah, it was like a thing. Yeah, kind of yeah. more regarding... But people were doing Midas for a while, too. That kind of started as the... Oh, yeah. The build. Subail started, I think. He went Midas first mid on yeah. bottom. Like Brown Boots, Midas, Ags, Blink, yeah. BOT. Then everyone was like, turns out that whole Ags is kind of a Midas anyway. Yep. Yeah, it's really not that not that great. The Midas first, I mean. Bounty Hunter again looking for this pesky courier. RMN, you dog. Look, they scan looking for the Bounty Hunter. This is so brutal for art style, dude. I just feel bad for him right now. He's level two. They're petrified of this bounty hunter. He's got an oracle in the jungle with him, like babysitting him because of the threat of this bounty hunter. RMN playing kind of a reminiscent to... Uh... Okay, he's going to buy out and suicide here at the Ancients. It feels weird to me that suiciding like this is so common now. Like, he was at full HP. Just wanted to get back to the other side of the map. Yeah, no mana. Yeah, like y you certainly understand the deny, you know, if you're kind of low HP or whatever, just head instead of walking back. But 
It's just still strange to see a full HP bounty go, oh, okay, well, that was... Time to go home and get my items. Yep. I could just imagine seeing that three years ago when I first started casting and being like, Feed her! <laughs> Feed, you know, uh, like... Clearly they're tilted on the radiant side right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just such a weird... I'm sure there have been many a moment when new casters are not used to the suicidal tendencies oh, of current day support. Yep, up top arrow connects, but they're a little hesitant here. They see the TP, it gets cancelled. Just the threat of the Witch Doctor is enough to force him back. Mind game Dota. But Chen's finally starting to get some space here. Trent, he's level 3, he's got boots. It's getting mildly better. Keyword mild. Mild, yeah. He's mild hot sauce right now. It ain't hot. It's an oxymoron. It's kind of funny they picked Razor and didn't even lane him against the OD. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. I guess the Jug is faring pretty well. 29 to 30. Yeah, he's within one or two last hits of Dendi. He's getting a lot of help mid, though. It's true. I mean, he gets bullied too, but here we go. Omni slash Dendi in trouble. Gets off the Astral. Seneco only level four, though. No false promise. Lolik looking to set up this kill. Witch Doctor actually gets it. They do get a counter kill on Jug, and now Lolik could die as well. Oh, no. He will. Purifying Flames, bring him down. It's a one for two. Dendi, a worthy sacrifice here. And clean it up. Razor all the while, just racking up the farms. Is he going... Is Illidan going mech? Or on who? Razor. He's got a ring. He's certainly not going tranquils. I'll give you that I think one. it's just drums. Oh, just drum. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, probably Dragonlance BOT, the standard Razor stuff. Yeah. I wonder if Illidan in the safe lane means he's going to do something different. Like, is there any chance he buys Midas here? It's Illidan. I'm going to go with a, a negative. All right, well. I think it's just drums. They, he does have it now, basically. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, buy out, buy out. Illidan, no. Charge across. Illidan in trouble. Yol nearby, but it's a three on two. Illidan runs for it. He does not buy out. It's a Midas, dude. I hope you're ready for this. Why wouldn't he have bought that? All right, he just bought an Ogre Club. Fuck. Okay. Well, I mean, he's going Dragonlance, but he just has the casual ring of regen. He could have just bought drums. Yeah, he could have just... Or he could have bought... No, well, well, Dragonlance. Oh, he was like really close to Dragonlance. I yeah, guess. he had all unreliable. That's why I think he did. I thought he didn't buy because buying gloves doesn't, you know, makes no difference. Yeah. It's all wrong. right. It's wrong. Curses. I thought I knew you, Illidan. You've changed. Oh, Safe. five four. Navi leading here. Um, general. It's level five still, so he's still like kind of under level, but at least he's tome just in case. Yol. Drops low, but that's everything spent from Ditchera, so he'll just leave. Yeah. General's doing all right. I mean, getting just about level 6 at 830, I think this is more than acceptable. Better than I thought he'd do for the offlane Spirit Breaker, knowing that Chen's not going to be able to rotate and help. Certainly could have gone a lot worse. Now, okay, riddle me this. Is Dendi getting a Midas? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, he is. Okay. Oh, we saw a little bit of um, OD Midas. Not that common when you're like that far ahead, though. Yeah, it's it seems pretty rare these days. And you have um, a Chen on your team. It seems like OD is like his big problem early on is just surviving. He does big damage, but he's just not very mobile. Yeah, I mean, Dragon Lance, of course, it's good stats, but just having that extra range to sit back helps you out a lot. We'll see if they punish this. That that's what I'm worried about. If they leave Dendi alone, of course, it'll pay some dividends and be be quite good, but. Don't they have like a dual core lineup though? And you're going like Midas OD? Oh, nice stun on General. OD with the Astral. RMN, he is level 5 here. They might be able to kill General. That was actually sick, dude. That really was. Nether Strike to get away. <laughs> you don't see that one very often, but that's pretty <laughs> you cool. You really don't. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a pro game. I mean, I guess I've seen it on another hero where you're like creatively using it during a fight to escape yourself. Not, I don't think not I've like seen that. It on though. a creep. Yeah, I've never seen it on a creep. At like to just, ten minutes. No hesitation. Just like, no, I'm out, dude. See ya. Nah, I'm done. And I think it saved him. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I think he was probably dead. RMN in kind of deep here. Needs to be a little bit careful. Detection. They're light on it, but he takes huge damage. Arrow almost hits. Oh, it's not the Hadouken Seder. Might have been able to snipe him. Coming what in does here. What Midas do for you, though? 
Yeah, it's a weird Midas game. Like, I think F5 is going to come on and be, like, super scary. Now, if this Jug was getting a Battle Fury, I think you get the Midas. However, the Jug is not getting a Battle Fury. <laughs> he's read the is latest patch Cass notes. doing work to Chen. Yep. Classic. Lolik, he's going to be just fine. Pops out of the Astral. This is a really weird fight. A lot of heroes, but nobody taking damage. Lolik just TPs home, and that's it. So it's a five-man now for Na'Vi. And maybe they'll just try to transition into a tower push. There is a glyph for F5, and they could definitely try to make a hold here if they're so inclined. Jug does have uh, TP Omni, though he might just opt to push mid instead. Up top, RMN. Down he goes. A feed. Another strike, yeah. Hudogen. That style's mass and gold here. No pieces bought of anything. Is this the first item Rapier Chen? Clearly. Yeah. First item Radiance. Right click a mech. One would hope it's just a mech. Right click an Ags. Right click a Midas. A lot of options here. Oh god, here. he's gonna Midas. Double Midas. I actually, that would make more sense <laughs> at this point. I don't know. I'm waiting for him to spend it. I'm, I'm ready here. There hey, is the you Midas on Dendi. Did the, uh, the Midas a couple times over in TNC. Back in when he was on TNC. Oh, yeah. A couple Midas Chen games that were tilting me. Uh, Bounty's level it 6 now. It should be mech, right? Dendi should be dead here. See, this is where if you had a 4 staff, you'd be thinking maybe. Nice arrow from Marana. And oh, who actually splits the Omni. It's going to keep him alive. Oh, wow, very nice. Staff. Very nice. Okay. Hello. I'm still just watching Art Style. Illidan. 2,500 gold. Dragon Lance. Art Style is farming. He's out of mana. Walking home. He's Wait. going eggs first. No mech required. This this is so odd, though. Like, they have a... Eggs. Oh, I don't know. It's like so, a five-man lineup, but they're not building five-man items. They're building Midas's and Agnums. I mean, to be fair, the, the Agnums is a pretty good five-man lineup. Just now they won't have a mech. Yep, here we go. RMN, the arrow hits him as another strike succeeds in a bash. General on the Spirit Breaker. Living up to the name of the cow with the lantern. Now, the Eganims on Chen, of course, does not lower the cooldown on uh, the ultimate anymore for the Gosu healing. You get to grab uh, the Ancients. I haven't seen this in a while in a pro game. Yeah, and typically the when you see it, he's... Like, at least level 11? Yeah. So, he's only going to get one. And the Ancients have been buffed a little bit since this change came into the game. Yep, now, with the, the Dragon, you get the extra bonus armor aura. The Granite aura is and ridiculous yeah, from the Golem. He's always done the Splash Attack. Uh, it's two can, drinks, uh, so we can't look at the other ones yet. He can farm a mechanism a lot faster, too. Mm -hmm. So, and the Golem, it, does it give you more now than just the uh, HP aura? Or is that it? I think it's still just the HP aura, but I could be wrong. I think the Thunder Lizard is the one that they buffed a lot. I think they changed it because yeah, you used to like only be able to self-buff, and now you can put the buff on other people. It's, that it was part a, of the change. The Tail Slam. Yeah, and they added the Tail Slam thing, so the, the Lizard is not useless anymore. Arrow, off the money. They get the tower up top. Na'Vi thinking about a fight. Chen doesn't really have the best creeps here to catch. Would really like to have a Dark Troll Summoner. They find Yol in the tree line, though. We'll bring him down first. Now, Astral. Oh, Illidan shows up. He doesn't have mana for ulti. They might find more here. General goes in. Lola getting pretty low. But so is General. A lot of tracks coming out. The all heal from Chen. Doesn't really top him off, but does help heal everybody up. False Promise also you are still available by the Oracle. Soneko hanging on to that bad daddy. And now the Tower Siege begins. Na'Vi coming in with the Chen army. Dendi hasn't died since he bought this Midas either. So it's working out. It He's is. He's got the four staff finished out. He almost died, but his team was there to rescue him. So sharing is caring. Nice deny from the Razor, though. Not a great trade for Na'Vi. Lose a tower to the Razor and then get denied by him. Illidan the hero. He's got BOTs now, so he is... He's darn speedy. Darn too. I just threw BZZ mid. Oh, hello. Spirit Breaker going to get a Midas? What do you think? Is, is he going to get Midas? Spirit Breaker, uh, I don't yeah. think so, no. But you know what? I've been wrong before. It's sick, bro. Attack speed. I think um, Silver Edge 
It's pretty decent this game up against yeah. the Razor. I wouldn't buy the Midas this game, but I think conceptually on Spirit Breaker, Midas is not terrible. Yo, yo, easy kill. I was gonna say, they don't even have an urn yet, though. Did they? Does Snakeo have one? Uh, nah, you should buy an urn. Negative. Yeah, urn on Spirit Breaker is great. But he spends a lot of time running around, so it's nice to have a Midas and, you know, still keep up in some levels, find some farm, and you can focus more on roaming. Yeah, it's like Nyx, especially when your yeah. core said like that support role. Yep. And for him, it has that added value of the attack speed, so it just you know helps you scale a little bit more. Slightly easier solo kills. Charge, Astral, did they time this right? Well, Oops. knocks him out of the arrow, but they should still find the kill. Uh, that's a pretty cute sequence there. Picture yeah, perfect. Fine. How nice is this Oracle up against track too? Pretty nice. Constantly, everyone just like groups up, throw out a Q. Get rid of that thing. Easy peasy. Oracle is so good. I've been I've been trying to practice Oracle, man. He is a very satisfying pub hero. You can, it's like Dazzle on steroids, man. You can save people so much more effectively. Yeah. It's a little ridiculous. Look at that purge, though. Uh, still has him catch up to the razor. Arrow, not gonna lash. Oh, almost. Hard to hit on the razor, but they'll grab RMN. They've got the kill. Purifying Flames will finish him off. Dark Troll Summoner sets the whole thing up. Compliments of the Chen. Well done with the micro there from Art Style. 11 to 4. Navi starting to get a lot of momentum here, Trent. Look They're at that doing gold it. graph. It's Trolls just moving trap? down. Just oh, it's not ready. Initiation after initiation. Cask against Chen Army. So annoying. Cask breaking raindrops left, right, and center, dude. Yeah, that's true. A lot of Chen creeps getting killed here. Unfortunate. Dyer may still stick around. Illidan set up with the ensnare. Now the astral. Then I don't know. Oh, nicely done by BZZ. He intercepts the arrow with the magic immunity on. Now Cask will start bouncing around. They're gonna leave General behind. Spirit Breaker will die. That was a cool play. Great use of the Blade Fury there. That's the dream. <laughs> Chat was uh was predicting some Navi stuff. Uh, they they were predicting the Chen builds. Oh, Blink Chen, <laughs> Dagon Chen. I did rattle off quite a few of uh, potentials. <laughs> if only he had the the Petnance, uh, Max Petnance, Dagon Chen. Oh yeah, classic. That's, uh, you know, penitence. That's a word that I always I always want to call it penitence. Oh yeah, penitence. Well, he hasn't leveled it, so luckily I won't have to say it. No, no not a concern this time. 30%? That's pretty legit, man. You know, get yourself an undying ult. Hey, dude, that's Skywrath levels. Skywrath, Petanence, Dagon, Instagib people. That sounds like some fun cheese. If you're trying to play some pubs later, let me know. Skywrath gets to what? I mean, that's level 1 Skywrath. Level 4, it's 45%. Yeah. Like, that's a baller right but there. But Chen's has a slow, so it's like Concussive and Ancient Seal mixed together. So, apples and oranges. He's got the Agonims, though, and here we go. We're about to see some Drake action. Oh, we got Golems here. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's just the HP aura. 15% bonus HP and, of course, a magic immunity. I really want to see the Lizards, though. I feel like this Dragon is super valued this early in the game, though. Like, this is why it's worth going, because, like, mech is usually a lot easier to build because you build the components up as you're, like, roaming around the map, but instead he just went pure brown boots, gets the earlier Agonims. And he can still go back from the mechanism, but like this dragon, it's just you can split push waves. No one can kill it. Cause it's so early in the game. It's so, taking the entirety of Roche. The biggest problem with the creeps is movement speed. The ancient black True. Drake is 300, so it's very easy to just run away from. You don't want to fight head on into it. It's great for sieging because you put the fireball down like under the tower, and the enemies can't really do anything about it. But he is kiteable. Yol hit by the Nether Strike into an arrow. Picture perfect set up once more from Navi. Do they find RMN here? Not yet. Do they have any sentries? That'd be nice. Seneco. Nope. No detection. They have dust on general. They dust it. RMN in the tree line. Those are radiant pings. They need some vision. Oh, the arrow, arrow flies song. overhead. They see him. Nicely done. And now they'll just and block him center? in and finish him off. Epicenter from Lolik. Doing some okay damage here, but nobody really close to death. False promise. Uh -oh. Out comes the all-heal from Chen, and it's a pretty whiffed team fight for Fantastic Five. Oh, they are crushing their hopes, dude. They're playing spoiler. General's going to keep going on to BZZ. Yeah, this right, really is really like risky. Navi playing for pride, F5 playing for life in the tournament, and Navi is about to crush their hopes and dreams of playoffs for this qualifier. Ruthless Dendi. 
Take out that rage, Dendi. Let it out. Well, Sineko bought up the uh, urn, so it allows General to go for an Echo Saber here. Give him the second chance at Bash Luck. Here we go. General, nope, cancels the charge. Thinks twice before heading up to the high ground. We're looking at like a 8k net worth lead, maybe 6k experience. It's not huge. It is definitely Heavy, surmountable. I don't know, 8k gold? Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's surmountable, but it is pretty huge. Like, that is... It's significant, but F5 still have a chance here. They could still win a fight and be right back in this. Juggernaut close to his Manta. That's a big item pickup. Razor, he's got Hurricane Pike. That's an item pickup. That's an item pickup? Yep. <laughs> They have a track to go with it, too, but, uh, again, the Purge can come out there from Seneco to stop it. Yep. But it's a lot of vision for tagging them up. But, again, you're right about this, Drake. For tanking towers and Roche, like, just for raw objectives, this thing's so beefy. Kills creep waves. It's great. Eight armor. I mean, the damage on heroes is nothing to scoff at, either. Lalek, like, went into it and was like, oh, shit, mistakes. Arrow hits on Illidan. Fire on the ground is a charge on the way for RMN. Just giving some vision. General cancels it out. He's the, the human gem right now. Cask. Oh, boy. It doesn't affect the dragon. Just bounces off him. It's nice. Absorbs a bounce. We got here more dragons. And there we go. We got some thunder hides. So what do we have here? You get the slam. How useful is the slam? Eh, it's okay. Four seconds, 25% slow, 250 radius, not too shabby. Frenzy, basically bloodlust without the movement speed. 75 attack Gusting. speed for eight seconds. Eight second cooldown, so it has 100% uptime for only a 50 mana cost, and it has 400. That is ridiculous for sieging towers. I mean, imagine a team fight. You well, pop that on, on OD. Dendi. Yeah. yeah. He already has Midas, too. And then, don't forget... Wardrum's aura on top of that. Attack speed bonus, 15% attack damage bonus. So it's like the Hellbear Smasher and the Alpha Wolf had a love child and then sold it to a dragon. And they raised it and, and it thinks they, it's a dragon. And then it's actually a wolf lizard. Yeah. No right. That's a Makes sick sense. aura though, dude. That thing is like whoo. Sick nasty even. Sick it's sick nasty indeed, my friend. RMN. We've seen how this story ends, my friend. Hello? Trying to maybe cancel TPs. Thinking about but, it, uh, but they're going to have to defend the high ground here. I don't even think he saw that charge go out. Oh, but now they'll see it in the mid. They do have a glyph. Again, Dragon tanking it up. Yol. Pushed back. RMN still in the back line. Here we go. Lolik with a stun on two. Marana jumps in. Almost kills Yol immediately. He does survive, but... Wow. That was a lot of damage. Mac now picked up by Chen. Yeah, I was gonna Danny's say. still scouting. Oh yeah. I was Dem's on the SB though, so Iron Man has to be careful. Oh, wow, yeah, he's got a full gem and the Echo Saber's up. Iron Man. Spirit Breaker's Lolek thinking about it. Lolik, there's the old. He grabs Art Style. It's a nice pickup. Dendi takes yep. a lot of damage as well. Our men are on the backside. It's the end of the Aegis. Now Seneko has to false promise himself. Compliments of the BZZ Omni Slash. Blink away from Dendi. Uh-oh. And I think Seneko <laughs> is done for here. Ditya may still survive, but on the back line, General. Finish off the Sand King. Now Death Ward certainly secures the kill. To one for three. And the gem. And the gem. Lolik God. And a honestly. great hold. So we're at the Sand King death. They are lucky that Dendi even got out. Uh, they popped the Moonlight Shadow while he was in the Aegis, so you don't get the buff. Just Ooh. scary. Yeah. Good thing he had a Blink Dagger there. Yeah. Damn, dude. Huge hold. Huge, huge, huge. 15 to 8 now. Giant Gold Swing heading their way on the Radiant side. Um, they now, call that one the Biggin. I believe so. Diffusal Blade coming up for BZZ. He's going to like double his damage output with the Manza style. Yol gain control of their side of the map again. They can put down the bounty hunter to go like deward everything. Iron Man's getting closer to a mechanism, and then one more one fight that just becomes Greaves. Yeah. Then he's taking care. Oh man, that's this is scary stuff with OD lineups though. It really is. Like now, Navi are in this odd situation where 
maybe 15 to 25 minutes. They hit their mark. They took a lot of objectives. They put a lot of pressure on. You can see it on the graph. But now we're getting close to that magic 30-minute number where, okay, Juggernaut's starting to come online. You're talking about the Diffusal Razor. He's got a series of core items now. He picks up a full S and Y for a little extra movement speed. He's now permanent haste rune status. That's a little bit ridiculous if you really think about it. They've got some, <laughs> some good scaling. Navi... I think it just gets harder from here. I mean, yeah, you've got some little peaks. You'll get E-Blade on Marana. You know, Dendi will get another item or two. He could hit critical mass with, like, a Hex and a Shiva's and be this big, nasty bird. But this this is going to be tough. You know, this Golden Age where the, the Drake is just tanking towers and nobody can stop it is, is going to be quickly ending here. And he's yeah. already picked up the Ancient Thunderhide. He's got the Wild Wing Ripper. So we're talking serious armor auras here. No, wait, no, there's only one armor aura, but we're talking about serious auras. Just needs a dragon Vlad's now. Dragon dead? Hmm? Is the dragon dead? Yep, I think so. Can't find it anywhere. All right, man. What level is his ult? It's level two, so you can have two ancients now. They got him. Freebie! Oh, the dragon respawned. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah, he's got another. Invisibility. So this is pretty close to the dream lineup. I think you want to mix a granite golem in there so you get the HP buff for the Top, team. Dendi. Oh, Dendi, Omni. Omni Slash. False promise. Sineko, the hero, saves him. Now BZZ tries to TP home. Yol gets hit by an arrow and punished. Got the radiant Dendi. Career, though. Oh, he still dies. It's too much. Oh, uh, was it a Maledict? Yep. Maledict plus the false promise. He took a huge amount of damage. Meanwhile, mid... Art style dies to the likes of the Razor. With the help of the Sand King, you will keep his Ancients alive. Missed the setup on that one as we were watching up top, but... Whew. That's brutal, man. That was so much damage on Dendi. Maledict is ridiculous in some of those situations. Another uh, little bit of a lead. He mm -hmm. shoveled over to the Radiant. Still up overall on Navi, but... Yeah, they still have a little rush. window here. They, they still have a timing, but... Razor is getting scary now. He's number one on net worth. We just said he picked up SNY. He's got another 2,200 gold. Like, almost immediately. I think he gets to just fight into them, though. Can't be really that good. I guess it is. E-Blade's coming out, so probably need it. Yeah, I think it's worth it against the Marana. General might be forced to charge away, but there's the stun from Lolik, and he should be going down. Astral buys him a little bit of time, and oh, he's dead. Can't get it off in time. Yeah, Razor stole a lot of damage. He got a rapier's worth of damage almost. I think Sineko might be dead. Oh, oh no. the stun, it just falls short. Now Illidan on the way in. Sineko. Yeah, greedy. He gets off the false promise. Fate's Edict, full rotation, purifying flames. We'll start picking him back up, but Razor, the permanent haste rune, he's going in. He's going in, he wants it. Arrow flies through, doesn't hit much. Razor survives, stunned by Glimmer. Lolik. Now Navi, they get brought in, and now they're in trouble. This Death Ward's doing some serious work. Sineko gets hit by another bouncing cask. BZZ chases him down. On the back line, Ditura able to make it away. Same with Dendi, but all of a sudden, three dead as F5 erupt with some momentum. Man, what a save. Yol comes in with the Glimmer Cave. He thought he was dead. Like, Illidan stopped moving. <laughs> With that last orb coming just before connecting, he's like, oh, there I go. Yeah. And he just gets glimmered up and it's like, oh, nice, I'm alive. Thanks, man. I mean, this bounty hunter was pretty far behind, but you, know, you mentioned track kills. It's really adding up now. They've got detection on him, compliments of Spirit Breaker, and they've got dust. It will connect, and RMN should die here. But he has the mechanism recipe. He's like 100 gold short. So, oh, no, there he goes. He's got it. Nope, still 100 gold. That's the mech recipe. I'm um, silly. But still, I mean, Bounty is finally going to have, like, a big team fight item that's going to contribute a lot here. And that gold graph, man, it's moving. And not in the direction of the Na'vi fans. No, 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 no. I wanted this Ag's first Chen to work so bad. I wanted it to just, like, roll over F5 so people start thinking, hey, maybe Chen's worth playing every once in a while. But I mean, it's I don't think it's anything to do with the Ag's or the, ch the, uh, the mech first, though. It's no, just, not particularly. It's but just the it's entire a, draft yeah. idea. It's another one of these games where you just look at Chen like, yeah, I kind of see why teams aren't picking Chen. This is certainly not easy to execute with. Think about the uh, Enchantress game, though. Like, 
That could have been a Chen too, where they had that like dual off lane. And she just like ran in and took down the tower. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of a style. He didn't really get that really aggression. Now again, they also picked Chen in the bounty hunter, which is kind of like Yolo. bounty counters Chen in the jungle, but at the same time, Chen allows you to early five man, which counters bounty in a lot of ways too. Yeah. Although now the bounty is kind of striking back. Once he gets mech, he, he kind of contribute to the five man. So, Roche falls for the dire. Navi to hang on a bit longer as it's Dendi rewarded with his Aegis of the Immortal. And hey, look at that! Sheever making an appearance on the stream with her guard. Bounty hunter picked off again. That's an E blade uh, out on Marana. So easy pickings. Dendi really likes his uh, Shiva's build. Fuck yeah, dude, it's good. I like this is the OD build right here. This is my favorite. Well, less the Midas. Forget about the Midas, but everything else. I think it's really nice. Like you get a lot of survivability with the armor. He's not a particularly hard, high armor hero. You've got mobility. You've got range. Now you've got a slow. So if you can initiate on somebody, they can't run away from you. It's always nice having the uh, Oracle too, so you don't feel too pressured to go BKV. Yeah, that too. Yeah, for sure. This is a really good, well-rounded build. Great mix of survivability and good damage output. So they got the Granite Golem. Everybody extra beefy. 2.1k HP on Dendi. Kind of ridiculous. Hurricane Pike. Tier 3 tower just taking some chip damage. Navi slow rolling it. Just a little spread here. You know, not trying to commit too hard. General thinking Ooh, about it, but cancels. Look at that, man. Ooh. It's just juicy. Arrow hits. Connects on Yol. There's the E-Blade follow-up, but Dityrock can't quite finish him off. He gets oh, mecked glitter. up. Where his teammates? They finish him down. OD drops the hammer. Sineko just barely lives. False promise. Keeps him alive. Illidan. BKB on. In the back line. BZZ still has the Omni Slash, but they're starting to crowd control him now. At the center from Lolik. Connects on three. Big damage. Can they get the follow-ups? Now Spirit Breaker dies. Dendi turns up the heat. He dropped the Shivas and kills the Sand King. Buyback from the Witch Doctor already been used. Arrow connects on Illidan. It's a five second stun from downtown and the Lightning Revenant falls. Ditya has to pay with his life, however. Will this be worth it? Yol close. makes it up to the high ground. He gets off the Glimmer Cape. OD pops into the Astral, but Yol gonna be revealed. Will they be able to kill send him? Back. Oh, the send back from Chen. What a sick setup. Now art style, he's locked in place. He will the first go time down. I've seen that. Chen send back inside of Astral. You know, for some reason, I didn't think it worked that way, but it's amazing. Yeah, it's glorious. Did you not hear? Oh, I fully explained it during the draft, you know? Come you on. did? Come on, Andrew. Oh. I did. Oh, I no, thought you were kidding. saying you wish we did. <laughs> no, no, I did. It's okay. It does say they have disruption, too. It's glorious. All right, well. It's okay. Sometimes I, like I have fine. a listening problem. No, we all Don't do Don't yell at me. You're busy, man. You're producing. That's true. It's I've done all the camera work, life. for better or for worse. You've so. done everything. <laughs> They, uh, they left the gem. Snake was staying next to it for a really long time, and now they get the Raiding Courier to grab it, so big save there. Mm. Um, now Snake was probably coming in like, oh yeah, I gotta get that. Oh shit, it's gone. Basically. <laughs> so still pretty good for Na'Vi, though. I mean, they get kind of cleaned up at the end, but remember, they forced a buyback on the Witch Doctor. They did some okay damage to the Tier 3. Could have gone better, but also could have gone a lot worse. Snake go looking for a Solar Crest this game. Medallion already up, about halfway towards the Talisman. General. What happened in that last fight anyway? Like, in terms of overall, in the end, like, because everyone's like getting a kill and they died, they get a kill, then they died. It looks like it was a slight gold lead for the Navi, but yeah. nothing crazy. That was a solar solo OD hammer onto a Witch Doctor, though, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I just really wanted to secure that kill. Um, big know. epicenter by Lalek, too, so. It just feels like they don't have enough damage to follow up from the epicenter without uh, the Witch Doctor. Old Arrow connects on Illidan. It's a five second stun, but he's got a lot of friends. And well, they go for the Bounty Hunter instead. That is cool. Hit the arrow on one, pop his friend. <laughs> they weren't expecting it, that's for damn sure. No. Clutch and General thinking about the charge again. The pump fake, he's got a double damage on. It's about to expire, but keeping them on their toes, Lolik. Drops the stun, just trying to clear out the creep wave, but now the Ancients are on the high ground. BZZ pokes forward. He does have the Omni Slash. Level 17, so it is maxed out. He's got BKB and like 50 gold. He really doesn't want to fight until he can pick it up, but now Lola gets charged. General stunned up, not going to be able to get the ultimate off. 
But Potom trying to jump forward. Now Omni Slash starting to do a lot of work. Dit Yurai has already used his leap. He's getting low, and he will die. Buyback now from Bounty Hunter. General in far. He gets false promise. He survives the ultimate from Dendi. Hammers fallen from the skies. Illidan survives just barely. Compliments of the Glimmer Cape. That Witch Doctor, honestly, is doing a lot of work here. That Glimmer yeah. Cape has saved so many heroes. It's a hold for F5, but another buyback used on the Juggernaut. That's Navi painful. slowly whittling them down here. So the only buybacks that we've seen are the Jug and the Bounty now. So... You had the little die back there and stifling their progression on the radiant side. Even if they can't fully shut them in just because uh, of their lineup, it's not like the best at holding this whole core area. Those buybacks are a nice little touch there for Navi to keep that edge going here. Solar Crest now finished on Soneko. That's and a nice pickup. Dendi with 5k gold just about. So I, I imagine Hex probably next up. Yes. One would assume. Looking for General. Not going to find him. Yeah, Hex is pretty serious this game. They've already got pretty good initiation, the fishing arrows, the pump fake charges, but the Hex on top of that. It's pretty good. Spirit Breaker is not far away from a BKB either. Oh yeah, he's really not. Interesting about the Echo Saber this time, kind of cool. Um, I've never actually tried it. I play a fair bit of Spirit Breaker, but I almost always go Shadow Blade. Yeah, Shadow Blade's really solid. Kind of want to try this Echo Saber, though. It's kind of neat. I mean, the oh, mana regen's BZZ. good. Where they are? They were, like, scouting over here. I was like, holy shit, he's in our lane, guys. Oh, he had a Manta. Yeah, charging the illusion. Oh, 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 Lolic. he found him. Oh, wow. Did your Ross sees him in the tree line, but they can't interrupt it in time. The cast point on Nether Strike. One of the longest in the game. I mean, you feel it right there, that's for sure. Close. Oh, Roche up in a minute and a half. Well, sorry, not up, but we'll know the timing. Do you feel like Solar Crest is a, a kind of a forgotten about item in some ways? I feel like Medallion and Solar Crest is just not that popular. And not for any particular reason. Like, it's, you know, it's not a bad item. It's it's not super value or not value. It's just kind of there, you know? You don't see it most games. Yeah, we saw one, uh, well, last game, too. Um, but yeah, you're right. No, yeah, but I think that, it's so. We've casted now 18 best of ones, and we've seen two solar crests <laughs> total. Yeah, exactly. No, I I certainly agree with you. Um, I think it's like you it's think it needs a buff? to be a really good early game item, but it's kind of forgotten about when it comes to late game support stuff because it fits a a weird niche of like the, yeah. that gold amount that you're at. You know? Yeah, it's it's like oddly expensive, but. Like 28.75, and it's like, oh, I could have a blink, and usually that beats out mm -hmm. so many items for support, so it's harder to get into that amount of gold again. And it seems like a lot of heroes aren't gravitating towards Medallion because there's so many minus hero armors that are relevant in the meta. You know, Slardar getting picked up so much, you don't really need a Medallion if you've got a Slardar on your team in a lot of cases. You know, you know Visage, like a classic Medallion carrier hero, is completely dead. That's true. Just not, just not the meta for Medallion, I suppose. So yeah, sometimes go. if you're snowballing PA or something, it's kind of mm -hmm. fun, like Solar Crest. Well, the game we saw it earlier, it was incredible on the Drow. It saved her in a few team fights against the PA. It's like, wait, where'd that evasion come from all of a sudden? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it forced the PA. That alone forced the PA into an MKB, which, you know, that's that's kind of cool in some ways. If you think about how big of an investment MKB is, if they're buying it just for Solar Crest, that can be sometimes advantageous, I imagine. Juggernaut, BKB. He doesn't have a buyback anyhow, so he'll spend all of his gold. Yol, what are you doing, little doggy? Glimmer Cape, that's what he's doing. That's scary, dude. He has gem and no buyback. If he gets picked off there, it's like... Pretty easy high ground siege. Chen working on probably an Assault Karas next. Now has the Vlads. They are going like max aura to the extreme. Really just needs the Thunder. So does that Thunderhide aura stack with the Alpha Wolf? You get 45% uh, yeah. bonus damage? That's nasty. Yeah, I mean, it should. It's all off base damage, so they don't stack like, you know, whatever, additively. But still, that's pretty cool. Man, I wish the aura bar was able to show them all. I wish it went right to like the end by your gold. 
How is many this, auras would they have Is right this now? the max that it can show? It doesn't show any more than eight? Ever? No, it always gets locked at that. Like, imagine how many they would have. It's a boatload. Is this like... Is there some weird strat where you do this in the enemy team? Just like... How do we counter the auras? I don't know which ones they have. Yeah, that happened to... Uh, I think it was Bulldog got ruptured one time. And he had so many auras on him that he couldn't tell how long the rupture lasted. Yeah, there you go. That's a kind of a funky strat. Yeah. I remember that came into play in World of Warcraft at some point, where there were just too many debuffs, and it's like, okay. Now we're sacrificing good ones for shit ones. RMN oh, walks into a sentry ward. That's just unfortunate. Good sentry from Na'Vi, though. No buyback. That means they can't trade well. All right. No tracks, and this means high ground siege commences. We're going to zoom out, get the full effect. There is a glyph. They're going to hold it for now. General continuing to pump fake with the, with the charge, making them think twice. All right, BZZ. Time to go God mode with this DD rune. It has no duration left, so scratch that. Time Andy is over. Blinks forward. Yules. Pardon me. Yol. <laughs> caught by the hex. <laughs> Yol yuled. Objective gaming. Go. BKBs no. getting used now. BZZ jumps forward. Goes in onto Seneco. Defensive Astral. Very nice. Holding on to the Omni. There's the all heal from Chen. BKB for Jug soon to expire on the backside. It's Ditya going in deep. Dendi jumps in to finish off the Witch Doctor. He'll buy back. Sanity's Eclipse has been deployed. Gets the kill on the Sand King. BZZ. Sounds like an Omni Slash was used. It certainly was. Now he's just going to try to TP home, and he will. Sliver of HP. E Blade will chase him and not do a hell of a lot. Regardless, it's a tough fight here for F5. They lose the barracks. Dendi hops forward. That's an Astral to try and set up. BZZ comes out of the well. Dendi has the Aegis. Remember, even if they kill him here, he's coming back. Now Illidan's down. He buys back. Yol dies in the well. It's a dieback for him. Dendi still alive inside of the Astral. Blinks out. Dodges the Plasma Field. And now gets healed up by Seneco. Wow, what a play. Dude, they're just fighting them in their fountain. And What's forcing buybacks. They're not even, like, forget about objectives, dude. We're Creeps are killing mid. All right, General just fed down. We're fountain farming here. Dendi, there's another. There's a buyback now on cheeseburgers. BKB popped by Illidan. He's trying to push him out. Art style starting to stand his ground. They'll turn. They'll right click. RMN now getting charged, but it's BZZ in the back line. He's going hard on Seneco. They'll try to keep him alive. Sharing is carrying. Dendi now getting low, maybe too deep, but no. He's saved again by the Oracle. He still has the Aegis, mind you. He hasn't even died a first time yet. Beautiful stun from Lulik. Channels the Epi. He gets it off. Big damage in the AoE fashion. Brings down the Chen and the Aegis. But does it matter? BKB now popped by General. Na'Vi looks like they've had enough mucking around. Mid lane of barracks have died by the creeps, mind you. So, mission accomplished. He did it. In the end, objective achieved. A bit of hand farming in between. It's fun. And now F5 just gets cleaned up. Navi reinitiates, and this should be G G Navi. And then F5 just Ooh. never found that fight. They didn't have the big warlock. Um, they had the epicenter. It was a sick play down bottom by Lolik, and then as well at the top lane fight too. But before Navi were full five man at your tier three, they didn't really find that one big fight with like Razor Jug that you're looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. um, where you can try and stall out this OD thing, get <laughs> a couple track a kills and you win. <laughs> yeah, me either. I got mine all wrong. Sick game, dude. Sick game. Yeah, we did good. But for what it's worth, I, I, I think Na'Vi had a, a good performance here. And I mean, assuming that there's no uh, you know crazy breakup looming, it's got to be feel good to you know get a win under your belt to round out the coverage, even though you're, you're already eliminated, you know, showing that Chen classic Navi line still has there. a place. Yeah, you know, they, they looked good. If only they could have channeled some of that energy into the games earlier. Tough beat. Tough beat, man. Okay, well, our next lobby's already up.